travel across America with me. Where are we? Eastern Nevada, US Highway 93, traveling between Idaho and Arizona. You won't want to miss the stops along the way. This is not what you picture when you think of Nevada, is it? Our first stop, was Wells. We got there late in the evening. Hopefully one day we will be able to go to the California Trail Interpretive Center. Fuel up, relax at the Angel Lake RV Park. What a view! Because tomorrow will be a full day adventure. Next gas, 136 miles. When traveling out west, always have your tank topped off. Simply gorgeous. This is a two-lane highway and not a whole lot of traffic. This is Laggy's Junction. Next rest area, 20 miles. When you come to a fork in the road, you know what you do? You take it. It looks like a few people are camping there. We will be taking a right. Please stay on existing roads and trails. Okay, here's a sign for the Pony Express Trail. Yes, this is near US 50, the loneliest road. That is certainly a great adventure with many historic Pony Express Trail stops. We are stopping in Ely. There's a few things we must see. This is an awesome Old West town. Do not forget to subscribe. And if you have, thank you. If not, please do. Fortunately, the historic Hotel Nevada provides truck and RV parking. Thank you, Hotel Nevada. This worked out perfect for us. James H. Simpson put the future side of Ely on the map during his 1859 exploration through the Great Basin. That's what this is called, the Great Basin. And as you drive down the highway, you'll see exactly why it's called the Great Basin. In the 1860s, silver and gold deposits were discovered nearby in what became the Robinson Mining District. The area grew rapidly with major copper discoveries. The Nevada Northern Railway was headquartered in East Ely, and it carried ore from the mines at Ruth to the McGill Smelter, as well as connecting Ely to the world on its 150-mile route north to the Transcontinental Railroad. Eastern Nevada became covered with a network of wagon roads. The Lincoln Highway wasn't even paid until 1922. The copper industry declined after World War I and the town began to struggle. The Lincoln Highway was designated US 50 in 1926. By mid-century, the popularity of the Victoria Highway, now Interstate 80, reduced US 50 to the status of the loneliest road in America. And that's what I mentioned. That is a great trip to take. Here at Ely, Route 6, US 50, and US 93 merge. We will continue on. But our primary reason for stopping Stopping in Ely this time was to see the ancient bristlecone pine. Its name is Prometheus, and this is a slab of a tree that was cut down in 1964 with all kinds of legends around that event. The bristlecone pine is known as the oldest plant in the world, and we love visiting those. Now, back on the road, and as I mentioned, U.S. Highway 6, U.S. Highway 50, and U.S. 93 merge at this point. Nevada has many historic signs along the byways. Be sure and stop as often as possible. And we took this scenic route through the Humboldt National Forest. Quite a pass, for sure. Not what you think of when you think of Nevada, is it? But hang on, have you subscribed yet? Please subscribe. Simply gorgeous mountain scenery. Please leave a comment. And have you told a friend about my channel yet? Nevada Scenic Byway begins. Uh, what do you mean it begins? This whole thing's been scenic since we crossed over from Idaho. We're stopping at Young's RV Park in Caliente for the night. I still have to take you to the million dollar courthouse and the Caliente train station. Hold on, there's more. And then there's Cathedral Gorge. Wait till you see this place. Moon slots? I'm gonna take you through the moon slots. Here we are at the Cathedral Gorge State Park in the Regional Information Center. Oh boy, they have all these signs out front. These are grabbing my attention. Spring Valley, Echo Canyon, Ward Charcoal Ovens, Regional Communities. What is this? A million dollar courthouse? Yes, that caught my eye. And okay, we've got to put it in reverse and get over and see this million dollar courthouse. What is this all about? And there's the Caliente train station. They're mentioning all these things that I wanted to see. Pioche, here we come. 
don't forget to send yourself a postcard. Oh, wait. No, uh, this can't be the Million Dollar Lincoln County Courthouse that I wanted to come see. This is the Million Dollar Courthouse I wanted to see. You're never going to believe this. It opens, I guess, on May 1st or 2nd, and this is April 30th. You've got to be kidding. We missed this by one day getting in. In 1871, Peoria became the county seat of Lincoln County, taking the honor from Hico. City fathers quickly decided to erect a suitable building to serve as the Lincoln County Courthouse. And the story goes on. It starts at $26,000, goes to $75,000, and then there's a whole 30-year period. And then it seems like that in 1907, the state of Nevada passed a repayment plan of 65% of value of the bonds. And when Clark County, which is where Las Vegas is, split from Lincoln County in 1909, the new county had to take on 60% of the existing debt. The cost for the courthouse, which topped $800,000, was finally paid off in 1938, two years after the building was condemned. That's pretty funny. The extraordinary cost led to its nickname, the Million Dollar Courthouse. Well, that's pretty bad, isn't it? Next door is the Mountain View Motel. Wait, it's the Mountain View Hotel. Um, I'm not sure about all that. It looks like it could use a little spiffing up, don't you think? This hotel was built in 1895 by the Ely Valley Mines to house their guests and lay claim to such overnight guests as Herbert Hoover, Nell Murbarger, the famous author of the Old West, and many U.S. Senators and Nevada Governors and many other notables. The food, the wines, the accommodations, and unmatched service was renowned throughout the West. Well, that's amazing. They need to fix this place up. Don't forget to subscribe. Great view from the hotel, wouldn't you say? I love to pull over at every historical sign, but we don't pull over at every single one of them. And what is this? I saw it on the way in. The Pioche Aerial Tramway. Wow. Wasn't expecting that. I thought this was like part of the stamp mill. I love these old west towns. Besides, the skies are perfect. This aerial tramway operated in the 1920s and 1930s, carrying ore from the mines on Treasure Hill to Godby Mill. Built by the Pioche Mines Company, the tramway was mainly gravity powered with the aid of a five horsepower motor. The weight of the ore and the full buckets going to the mill pulled the empty buckets back to the bin. In 1928, cost of delivering ore via the tramway to the mill was six cents a ton. Sounds like a bargain to me. All right, let's go back to Cathedral Gorge. What do you mean? I'm not going to get to that today? No, next video. Please leave a comment below and wait till you see Cathedral Gorge. flip-flops on the ground and classic road trip thank you